The question is that the motion be agreed to. I call the Leader of the House. I'm very pleased to respond to the member for Wentworth on this question. This is a guy who stood up here and just lectured us about relationships with the media and free speech. The same person who sued the Sydney Morning Herald over a piece involving allegations about an ex-girlfriend's cat. The same person who settled with the Australian Financial Review in court because of an article calling him part polymath, part sociopath. And he even tried to sue to stop his political opponents questioning whether he was fit for public office. We will not be lectured by the member for Wentworth who fits into a fine Tory tradition. A fine Tory tradition. This is the political mob who, when they were in government, Peter Costello put in a gag order on charities. As a condition of funding, he tried to shut them up. The representatives of some of the poorest people in this country. This is the same mob that cut the Environmental Defenders Office funding to try and shut them down in their ability to take on government. This is the same mob who limited, through work choices, the ability to have freedom of association of working people. This is the same mob, the same mob who John Howard used conclusive certificates to prevent FOI releases, something that this government changed. This is the same mob who, when you look at what they do in Victoria, Ted Bowyer, denial of public access to large government contracts done in secret. This is the same Tory political tradition that, of course, had Joe Bielke Peterson throwing people in jail for demonstrating on the streets of Queensland. And that tradition's been brought back by Premier Newman. Standing orders still apply and 94A can still be issued. Premier Newman, who has placed a gag order on community organisations once again in order to stop them speaking out on Morton. government policy. The fact is, and it's little wonder, given what uh, his member Mr Driscoll's going through, that he doesn't want community organisations talking about the performance of government. So we won't be lectured by this mob over here who represent not just years but decades of tradition, decades of tradition of trying to shut down voices in our community, whether they be community organisations or whether they be the trade union movement. What we've seen today is that the Leader of the Opposition couldn't resist going back to his roots, going back to just saying no to everything, going back to negative Tony, back to nasty Tony. He's been sitting there, stewing away. Every day we've seen the Mark Riley moments where he sits there trying to keep control of his temper, trying to calm down the anger every day, and it's boiled to the surface. And what we see with this, this motion of suspension of standing orders put forward here today is an attempt to release that pressure valve. Yeah. Yeah. Release that pressure valve. And we understand it must be difficult. It must be difficult for a bloke with his character to keep in control for so long because we know what his character is about. But today it fitted in. It fitted in with his general attitude to life because this is a bloke that's never seen a billionaire he didn't want to embrace. This is a bloke, this is a bloke who can be always, always relied upon to back in the big end of town. And what we have here, what we have here, I think, when we have this legislation that will be debated later on in the week, but they didn't wait. They didn't wait to look at the legislation before they said they'd oppose it. I reckon, I reckon it was two words that turned them off. Public interest. As soon as they saw that, they said, well, we know we're against that. We don't have to look at the detail. We don't have to wait for the committee processes. We know that we are against it. Just like they're against action on climate change, they're against the NBN, 
They are against taking action against uh, the big miners. They are against national hospital reform. They are against assisting the steel and car industries. They are against the parliamentary Leader reform. The they are against the parliamentary the Leader of the budget House office. must display where standing orders need I, to I, I be certainly will, Madam I Speaker, the because, of the because of this ridiculous motion, we are not actually having debate on what we should be talking about before this parliament. Once again, they have shut question time down because they have no issues of substance to go to. No issues of substance to go to. And we have the hypocrisy of the person who employed David Oldfield standing up here, standing up here, being organised out of his office. The bloke who said when asked a question, do you welcome Pauline Hanson's endorsement? Said, look, I'm happy to take votes where I find them. Yeah. That's what he said on Sunrise. But he comes in here and attempts to lecture us, attempts to lecture us about, about these issues. The fact is, the fact is that this side of the parliament, this side of the parliament wants to discuss the real issues. The real issues. The real issues of our plan for a stronger, fairer and smarter Australia. Yeah. Our plan, our plan for the economy, for manufacturing, for protecting Australian jobs. Our plan for education through the Gonski reforms. Our plan for the National Disability Insurance Scheme. Yeah. Our plan that has been rolled through this parliament on issue after issue, day after day. Those opposite don't have a plan for the future. It is no wonder that his own colleagues see the Leader of the Opposition as a policy lightweight. A policy lightweight who it. can't talk about issues because he starts off with a $70 billion black hole. All they offer, all they offer is cuts and relentless negativity. And we don't have to. We don't have to project into the future what they would stand for were they to succeed in September. We can see it with what state Tory governments are doing right around the country. Sacking nurses, sacking teachers, cutting back on community services. We see their selfish, their selfish, their selfish position. But today, of course, today, of course, they also don't want to debate, and we could have had some debate about the economy. But of course, taxes, interest rates, unemployment and inflation are all today lower than they were again when, uh, when they were in office. And I mean, I was, uh, I was looking forward to question time continuing because I predict, I predict that I might have got a question. Because I couldn't get one from across there, couldn't get one from across there. And if I'd got a question, if I'd got a question, I would have been able to talk about the member for North Sydney's little trip down the Bruce Highway last week. His little trip down the Bruce Highway. Where he said, where he said, Order. we've promised a long... Uh, you were talking about your drive north and you would have spent a lot of time on the Bruce Highway. This is what he said. Well, it is improving. I mean, you know, I'm not going to play games on this. I mean, there was a lot of work happening on the Bruce Highway. He went on and said, well, between Townsville and Cairns, there was a lot of work. Indeed, there the was. Of opposition Indeed, there was, and there is. Ice and he knows Indeed, it. that's consistent with what the member for Herbert said. I'll give Labor a pat on the back and say they have spent more in their four or five years on the Bruce Highway than we did before. It's no wonder I can't get a question on infrastructure and transport because those opposite are endorsing us on the issues of substance, on the real policy debates that we should be dealing with in question time, we're quite happy to get questions. But what we, what we don't get is questions of substance on policy from those opposite. What we get is personal attacks. What we get is relentless negativity. And it is no wonder, it is no wonder increasingly, as you go around the country, when people take a close look at the Leader of the Opposition, they say to themselves, as was said about another Member political candidate one time, in your guts, you know he's nuts. That's what they say, because they know that he is so negative, so relentlessly negative, that he just says no. 
Well, if you want to run the country, you've got to actually put forward an alternative vision, and that has to consist of more than just slogans. Yeah.